thank you to the distinguished representative of the Netherlands. I now give the floor to India. The distinguished representative of India, you have the floor. President of the Assembly, President of the Council, Honorable Ministers, distinguished delegates, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, Madam, congratulations on your appointment as President of the Assembly. India was among the 54 states that participated in the Conference of Chicago of 1944 when ICAO was established to, quote, create and preserve friendship and understanding among the nations and peoples of the world, unquote. Since then, India has continuously made significant contributions towards the development of international civil aviation. And today, it indeed is my great honor and privilege to present this statement on behalf of India at the 41st session of the General Assembly of ICAO. Civil aviation has gone through one of the most tumultuous phases in its history since the last assembly. ICAO's leadership in bringing about a structured and harmonious recovery from COVID through the ICAO Council Aviation Recovery Task Force, of which India was a member, is indeed laudable. We have all assembled here in person in this august setting today, and this is a testimony of our efforts and the resilience, grit, and determination of each and every member of our global civil aviation family. The Indian aviation sector is rapidly resuming normalcy and expected to recover to pre-pandemic levels by late this year. India has become the third largest domestic aviation market in the world and is expected to become the world's third largest air passenger market by 2030. In the past few years, India has seen the democratization of air transport services and broadened and deepened the availability of civil aviation to 1.4 billion people. A unique regional connectivity scheme named Uran was launched by India in October 2016 to make flying affordable for the common man. In five years, this immensely successful scheme has conduct conducted over 200,000 flights and flown over 10 million people so far. Till September 2022, the scheme has connected 70 cities through 433 routes. India's commercial aircraft fleet size of more than 700 is poised to grow by 100 to 125 aircraft every year and will increase to over 1,600 by the year 2030, with an estimated investment of $175 billion. To build world-class infrastructure, India has added 67 airports, waterdromes, and heliports in the last decade, taking the total number to 141, almost double of what it was in 2013-14, and this number will continue to grow to over 200 by, 20, by 2025. Safe air navigation is our priority, and we have also deployed state-of-the-art technologies to provide safe and efficient air navigation services over one of the biggest and busiest airspaces in the world, which spreads over 2.8 million square nautical miles, including the oceanic area. Space-based ADS-B is the latest addition to an impressive array of ANS equipment. Most importantly, ever mindful that our growth must be climate friendly and sustainable, India has announced an ambitious target of net zero emissions by 2017 in COP26, including increasing non-fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030, meeting 15% of its energy requirements from renewable energy by 2030 and reducing the total projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons from now till 2030. Yesterday, we also signed an MOU between the International Solar Alliance and ICAO, an idea that was first put forward by both India and France uh, in 2015 with 122 countries participating in this International Solar Alliance. The understanding that we are arriving at on Corsia and LTAG with flexibility based on each country's national plan will certainly set the pace for tackling the challenge of climate change across the world. India is also building solar-powered green airports. Production of sustainable aviation fuels potential in India has been explored and airlines have already conducted flights using biofuels. 
India is committed to working in collaboration with ICAO, states, industry and all other aviation stakeholders to deal with the emerging challenges in the aviation sector. Cyber security, drones regulation, capacity building, continued risk assessment and decarbonization of the aviation sector through in-sector measures such as SAF production and technology transfer are important areas in which India is committed to working with the global aviation fraternity. Finally, India seeks re-election to part two of the IQO Council. We look forward to the support of all member nations. Please join me once again to applaud the efforts of each and every member of our global family in building a safe, sustainable and resilient international aviation system. I wish the assembly session a great success. Thank you.